Might there be a day where you can live forever? That generation will never die unless you're hit by a bus. If you could live forever, would you? Be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. Death is a topic you mentioned in this book. Yes, life and death. Life and chapter. death. I'm more compelled by death. As should we all be. <laughs> yeah. I, I was a Christian growing up until the age of about 18. And then when I discovered atheism or agnosticism or whatever they want to call it, my perspective of death changed. And I actually became really comfortable with death, the, the prospect of death. Where, where, where do you think and f where are you at in your perspective and thoughts on death? For myself or just in general? In general and yourself. Probably quite inseparable, I imagine. I don't know. Death. Uh, it, it, death comes up as a as a topic of conversation commonly when we talk about prolonging life. And now that we're into the genome and into human physiology, might there be a day where you can live forever? Okay? And there's something called the generation that will have escape velocity. Do you know what that is? Okay, I'll tell you what it is. So in the last 50 years... We've increased life expectancy 20 years. In the last 10 years, we've increased life expectancy by five years. So there will be a time where in the last year, we increase life expectancy by a year. At that moment, Homo sapiens have achieved escape velocity from death. Okay. That generation will never die unless you're hit by a bus. Okay. <laughs> So that brings you the question, if you could live forever, would you? And my reply to that, and I don't want to answer for other people. So this is my, I want to be very clear that yes, I have my opinions, but I don't care if you share my opinions. You should have your own opinions, okay? My outlook on this is, Well, let's take, for example, a bouquet of flowers. If you buy a bouquet of flowers and hand them to your loved one, and the bouquet, the flowers are made of plastic, how would your loved one reply to that? They, they probably think you don't love them. But you say, but darling, they'll last forever. <laughs> okay. No, that's not the variable here. That's not what matters. The fact that flowers die is the very reason why they have meaning as a gift. Your handed flowers, they're going to be dead in seven days. That means, you know, you better pay attention to them. You're going to smell them. You're going to take care of them. You're going to make sure you change the water and trim the stems. And you're going to put it in a central place so that not only you see them, but so does everybody else. You're going to celebrate those flowers while they are alive, because the day is going to come very quickly where they're going to die. And in their senescence, you're going to nurse them through as the neck gets a little weak on the stem. You might try to prop them up until they're gone. It is the fact that they're going to die that gives them meaning as a gift. And dare I say that my knowledge that I'm going to die gives not only meaning to my being alive, it gives urgency to it. On my deathbed, I do not want to regret having the interest and ability to have solved the problem that I did not solve. Uh, to have an experience that I could have had, but then I did not. Knowing I'm going to die means I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to be all about action. Action. I, if, I will tell people I love them if I love them. I will uh, accomplish things. I will learn this thing I wanted to learn. I will do all I can. Because you know what I want on my tombstone? It's a quote. 
from a famous American educator of two centuries ago. His name is Horace Mann. He was also a university president, I think it was. He gave a commencement speech, one of his last. And he says to the graduates, I beseech you, love that word, nobody uses that word anymore, beseech. Shakespeare loved it. I beseech you to treasure up in your hearts these my parting words. Be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. I want that on my tombstone. I don't want any other monument but that on my tombstone. If everyone lived to that goal, oh, how different the world would be, how enriched it would be with people's energy to improve the lot, not only of others as individuals, but of your neighborhood, your society, civilization itself. So that's what I think of when I think of death. By the way, in there I reference dogs. <laughs> There's a dog over there for anyone. <laughs> There's a dog over there called Laika. In the corner of this room. Laika, where have I heard that name? Laika. 65 years ago, Laika orbits Earth. The first dog to orbit Earth? Uh, the first animal to orbit Earth. Then there's some guinea pigs, and then there were some chimps, and then Yuri Gagarin orbits the Earth, the first human. I think he was the seventh mammal to orbit the Earth. <laughs> I had to check my notes on this, but there was, uh, if you add up mammals, we, humans were very late in the, in the space achievement scale. So when you come home for having been away, if you own a dog, you will know exactly what I'm describing. By the way, this does not happen with cats. So with a dog, the dog is happy to see you. Not just happy, hey, glad you're home. It's they jump up and down and they want to lick your face and they want to jump into your lap if it's a lap dog. And if it's, a, if it's an Irish wolfhound, they'll want to knock you over and lick you in the face. They're excited by you. First, I would ask, did you do anything that day that deserved that praise, <laughs> all right? So one famous quote is, be the person the, your dog thinks you are, okay? <laughs> That's a high bar, let me say. But there's the, and by the way, if you go out to just check the mail and come back, the dog is happy to see you. So now, wait a minute, well, why? Uh, let me just make up a reason. Okay, I'm just pulling this out of my ass. You ready? Okay. Uh, dogs don't live as long as we do. The famous dog year calculation, there's some nuances to it, but the blunt calculation is one dog year is seven human years, okay? So when a dog is 10, they're like 70, all right? When a dog is 12, they're... 84. They're getting ready to die. Okay. Dogs die between age basically 12 and 16. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. If it's a factor of seven difference, it means we live an entire week of our lives for every single day a dog lives. So maybe the dog knows it won't live as long as we will. Maybe it knows it's got a truncated life expectancy relative to humans. Maybe it knows it's got to make every day count. We could languish away five days out of the week. You still have the other two days to watch football with your friends. The dog doesn't have that luxury. So I'm making this up. I'm going to declare that dogs know that every day of their lives matter. And therefore, they're going to make it count. And they're going to be happy every day. You ever wake up to a dog that's depressed? Never. Uh, 
no, you know, I'll walk myself today. Don't worry about it. I'll feed myself. I'm, I, I don't want to eat. I'm, no, they've been sick. All right? That's how you know they're sick. They're not licking you in the face. That's a sad day for the dog. But then they pop back. Dogs don't stay sick for long because they live seven times faster than we do. <laughs> Have you ever taken a dog to the vet and they perform surgery on the dog? Okay. You know where I'm going here? They perform surgery. The next day, the dog is out running around in the park. I've seen dog with the leg amputated. Amputated leg. And the next day, they're a little slower, but they're kind of walking around and they still want to lick you in the face. And they're as good as new after three days. If we had one of our legs amputated, oh my gosh, I'm still in the hospital a month later. Dogs live in the fast lane. And maybe they know it. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously, and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.